Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Chris. Today we are heading up to Eric, uh, my friend Eric's house, um, also known as Grand Tour on Instagram. Um, he's got a really nice build. So the plan is to install a Dorch fuel pump and we're gonna do like the full tutorial, show you guys from start to finish how to install it, uh, really detailed so if you ever have to install yours, you feel comfortable doing so. We, have, we are also running uh, David Shop's tune on the car currently. We're actually, it's looking really healthy on the logs. Uh, it looks really good, version 1.0. So just this, this is the first map. And uh, it's, it just feels really good. It's only about 17.8 pounds of boost is what I'm getting it up to on uh, four or 5,000 RPM. So uh, we are limited right now, but we wanna be safe as well. So, so far it looks very promising. I can't wait to show you guys new logs, new numbers. Uh, on a dyno uh, here soon to come and then we'll kind of go from there and uh, compare and all that good stuff but um, it's so far looking very promising um, I'm talking to him a lot the communication is very strong hey guys Chris here uh, we're at Eric's house this is Eric aka Grand Tour so uh, we're here at his garage which is a really cool garage here nice cabinets um, there's his car cool little race deck flooring here so we're going to go through the whole process of installing this uh, this Dorch pump and uh, we're actually going to open it because we haven't opened it yet and then we'll kind of go from there so we'll lay the parts out and then we'll go through each part and uh, let you guys know what it is yeah. alright guys so here goes the fuel pump uh, this is actually the Dorch stage 2 I believe yep. look at that thing Damn. and what's cool about the Dorch it has the quick disconnect and you don't have to worry about the 6AN fitting on that. And then of course you're gonna have your 6AN on this side that goes into the, you'll see a steel, um, uh, aluminum, not aluminum, it's a stainless steel rail. Oh QR cool, code QR code. Yeah, he sent directions over guys, but we've already installed this one. So I'll, uh, I'll show you guys how to do it as we go. Um, and I'll tell you guys torque specs as we go. So really cool pump. It's got <laughs> some weight to it. It is not um, light, but that's just, you know, testament to their engineering there very nice very nice pump so we have a wiring harness which is a straight connect they ask for your VIN number and it straight connects to your car there's a, uh, a guide the bolts and an o-ring that goes into that uh, plate we got a, a stainless steel high pressure line right here really nicely bent ready to go for your car and then our quick connect uh, line there is our connection bracket the bracket that goes on the bottom which we'll show you later and then like I said some uh, hardware this is gonna be our relocator for some wiring in the engine bay and you'll see as we go uh, where this goes alright guys so before you do anything get up here undo that battery get the negative which is a 10 millimeter put a rag under it so it doesn't close put a rag in your latch so you don't accidentally close your trunk and uh, start your process after that. So yeah, on the on the cold air bracket, he's got his uh, meth kit solenoid that we're gonna actually remove temporarily um, as we uh, work on the car. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up there. So strut brace, cold air, I mean the uh, air box gets removed and then uh, we can start doing our, our project. All right, guys, so next we're going to remove this uh, engine insulator. So you're going to pull it off of there, pull it off of here, and gently work around the back of it to kind of get it up. It's kind of tough to move, but once you get under it and get it away from these uh, sharp bits, it's pretty easy. So you just kind of get your hand under it and kind of work it out. So just kind of pull. Be very careful while you're pulling it, not to destroy it. Get it over those these little mounts here. That's pretty much it. All right, there it is, one piece. Using the pick tool to uh, just gently raise up the the uh, these guys right here, because I don't like to just mash these. So if you just pick use a pick tool, you could gently raise up on the bra on the actual mechanism, and it's actually a lot easier to remove. So we know uh, from a lot of experience, this is a mass airflow sensor. I just leave it here on this side. We're gonna undo our breathers. Uh, there's gonna be three of them. This one here, and then we're gonna start undoing this uh, this air uh, air intake system 
from its mounts and then get it out of, out of our way to start working on where we need to go here. All right guys, so we're in a good spot to start removing harnesses. So we've got uh, O2 sensors uh, we're gonna remove. We got map sensor. We got a couple little sensors over here that I have no idea what they do, but they are gonna be part of it. We do have a um, fuel pressure sensor, uh, a couple sensors here for our breathers, and pretty much, you know, what we're gonna do, blow by sensor, what we're gonna do is take them all off. I know where they go. If you don't know where they go, you should be uh, blue taping with a, uh, like, a, like no, number one, two, three, and then you know where they go, simple as that. So, so I'm gonna click the tab out, just pull it out with my fingernail, and then you push down to release it. And then you're gonna actually pull it off of your, your guy there. So simple as that, it's already loose. One, same thing, pull out, then clip down to release it. Very easy, those two are done, and then I just kinda lay them over. that one we also gonna have two torques right here uh, we got these two guys that are sitting right here and that's in order to remove this bracket that has all this wiring uh, away uh, guys on these clips right here a lot of people try to remove them uh, let's see if you guys can see them they're actually like little uh, U type pins all you have to do there is push them in and pull out you just the mechanism works so don't remove that pin all right we actually do have to remove, actually, yeah, because we have to remove the inf So this is, I think this is a, a oil pressure sensor. We're gonna actually remove this one only because we have to get to this manifold. So for safety purposes, we're gonna remove that, keep it right here. And remember guys, a lot of this stuff can only go certain places, but just to be safe, you should mark them, All right? We're gonna remove these two torques and get this um, wiring bracket out of the way. So that's what they look like, they're little aluminum T25s. Put them in your tray. All right guys, so now you have a grommet right here. So pretty easy, just get under the grommet with your fingers and just, just tug up a little bit, just gently, don't have to go crazy. Off the grommet, simple as that. Now that's kind of just gonna hang there with all of our wiring for a little while. There's nothing else in our way. There's a clip that goes to the throttle, to the, from the charge pipe to the throttle body. We're gonna pull that clip out use a screwdriver to guide it and then once you get it pulled a little bit let go and just kind of slight slowly take it off so it doesn't spring away from you and that's our retaining clip for our charge pipe I like to remove the throttle body because it makes it easier to pull everything out so throttle body is gonna be removed so for throttle body guys it's gonna be a 10 millimeter um, the way I like this little uh, like a snub stubby um, uh, three eighths here and what happens is this is actually movable to get into these tight areas So this is the one I always use for my throttle body and you're gonna get to the top two Which is easy first and then work your way down into the other uh, side here and underneath which is a little harder to get to but not impossible of course All right guys, so we've loosened I mean we've taken out all four of the throttle body bolts which look like this and Next we are going to pull the throttle body completely out um, and underneath the throttle body, as I'll show you right now, is a couple connections. One is an air line, so I'll show you here. You're going to squeeze both sides like the other one. And the next one's actually a uh, harness, and it goes into this throttle body here. There it is, that guy right there. And you're going to remember that's where they go because they just kind of laid down at the bottom. And there's our throttle body, so that connector and this air line, just like your breather hose that we had right here, same connection, squeeze both sides and pull out, same as, same as that one. All right guys, so now we're at these D, uh, the DME connectors and there's a bunch of them down here. There's actually a total of six. And what we're gonna do is work our way from the back, which is the back to the front. And I'm gonna show you guys with the back one because it's hard to explain. But All right guys, so our, our furthest back clip is out and I'll show you guys how it works because it's a difficult one to see. So the way it is, it's, it's plugged into your DME like this. You gotta get your hand in there and pull this slide out. Guys, uh, the next two pins after our long one is going to be two square looking ones like this. 
and they pinch from both sides. So you're gonna pinch the left and the right, like this way, and pull them out. There's two of those. This one's, I'm gonna show you how to do, I'm gonna start with the back one and work my way out. So here's what you gotta do. Here's the clip. When it's plugged in, it's actually closed like this and it's facing this way. So what you wanna do is you wanna press this tab and bring the bar over the tab. See that? Now when you plug them in, you do the reverse. You plug it in, it starts to close itself and then you really wanna hold it in there while you close the tab. So that's the next three of them. They're all like this. So what, what I'm gonna do with these three because they're very similar, but they're not the same, is just put a little piece of tape on two out of the three. All right guys, we're at the point where we took out uh, these uh, manifold bolts and there's one, two at the bottom, three top, four bottom, five top, six bottom, seven top, seven manifold bolts. Uh, they are 11 millimeter for the most part. There's some that's 10 millimeter if you go aftermarket. So here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna wiggle the manifold out. And we don't know where that's hooked up to because I didn't install it. So let's come down here. Uh, what, we, what we did was we uh, wiggled this thing until it came loose. And now we're getting held up by this uh, harness. So we're gonna pull this up, press and release this harness from the fuel pump, which will be used on a new one here. Bracket is gonna be replaced with our new bracket from Dorch. So let's go ahead and pull that out too. So, all right guys, so we're at the fuel pump. We got a 17 millimeter. So we're gonna get a rag and put it up under here because when we crack this high pressure, it will release a little bit of fuel. Not much, but enough to get us annoyed here. So here we go. This one we're not gonna be reusing, so we're gonna get it out of our way to be able to get this um, bracket off. So we're gonna remove these bolts right here all of this out of the way fuel line is actually loose and now we're going to actually remove this quick fitting so all you have to do with this one is push in and pull out before we remove this this uh this fitting right here it's also good to remove this breather hose this breather hose again squeeze on both sides and pull up pull that out out of the way let's get it out of our way and then let's get a 17 millimeter uh wrench and get it in here and let's crack this fitting so we can get this pump off. All right, we got a little bit more seepage, I'm sure, coming, which is fine. We can kind of put our rag here and loosen that up. All right, that frees up our pump. And we're also gonna remove it from the fuel rail. So get your 17 millimeter and get it off of the fuel rail as well. All right from the fuel rail and we're gonna get rid of this uh, stainless because we got the new one from Dorch. So just go ahead and pull that stainless out. Here we go. So they're T30s, we're gonna pull those out first. And we will not be reusing these but we are gonna keep them with the pump. Falling. Uh, there, there it is. Uh, door supplies a replacement bolt for our knock sensor, uh, which is going to be our thickest bolt in this uh, little baggie here. The, the old bracket that was holding this line with the new one, that's going to be a little bit more streamlined. It pushes down the cable a little bit further. So this is how you open it. You just kind of unclick it there. It spreads. We can put it into place. Put our line in. Click it. And then we can put our new Dorch back in and we're going to tighten down this um, this uh, new bolt we put on a knock sensor and let's give it just a little tight in there you don't want to strip anything so we got the newton meter set up to 21.5 for knock sensor first so 21.5 newton meters of torque on the knock sensor uh, we got this um, cns of this uh, pretty much print, printed 3d printed uh, little I don't know what you would call pushing. this. Yeah, pushing. And what they did with this is they made it as a lineup tool. So this is gonna align your fuel, uh, I mean your bracket perfectly into place without wiggling. It's a really cool feature. And then you pull that out when you're done. So what we're gonna do is first, we wanna put on our gasket. So uh, of course with our handy dandy kit comes a gasket and all the bolts needed. Now. We gotta keep to the specs of 
the um, the pump to tighten these down, and we'll give you those specs in just a second. Right now, we're going to put down our gasket first. It's right in place over that. We're going to face the Dorch towards us, and we're going to put it down just like that. So we're going to face it just like this, down. Let's put that in, kind of seat it. All right, we're there. We're going to use the short. Uh, they come with four screws. This is going to be for the top of the pump. This is going to be for the bracket. We can set those into place. Start getting them started here. Oops. So we're going to go here. There we go. That's that one. Same thing here. Um, and then we're going to pull these caps off. So the way you want to install it is long side out. I know that seems weird, but that's how you want to do it. So long side is going to be out towards the alternator. Yep. All right, guys, so we're going to get our bolts into the pump up here. Also 12 newton meters, and you want to tighten evenly. So let's go down first. There's one, 12 newton meters. Two. We're going to double check the one. And that's it, guys. Dort supplies a new um, stainless uh, fitting here for our high pressure side. Let's get a finger tight. 17 millimeter. Let's get hand tight there. Don't want to over tighten them either. So just go by, by feel. Alright. Alright guys, so we're gonna take our wiring harness. One's gonna to attach to our wire here. Double make sure that's the right positioning. There, close that pin. And then we're gonna come under and attach to our fuel pump. All right, so that's wired in. Now we're gonna put back our bracket that we took out for the. All right guys, so we've secured back our bracket, which you can see here. We put our vacuum hose back on, so we just tighten that back down. We've got um, our uh, harness connected, just kind of do a checklist. Uh, fuel, the fuel line right now is where we're at. So we got the fuel line that Dort sent us. We're going to hook up to our quick connect on one side and our fuel pump on the other. So let's go fuel pump first so you guys can kind of see here. So we're going to just click onto the fuel pump here, get our angle, and you'll hear a click. There's a click right there. This guy in right here. So you'll hear a click. There it goes. We're in. We're going to come and put our little plastic panel back on. We just slide it back over with our two clips there. Make connection. And get it back. Up. Get it back into place. There we go. See, it's back in tight. Our lines are out of the way. And now. It looks like we're about to put back our intake manifold. So we're going to check everything, make sure this line's in, make sure our air hose is in, make sure our connections are tight, our fuel pump's good, knock sensor's in place, everything's good to go. We are completely done with the fuel pump install. So now we are moving on to putting back our manifold in reverse order and kind of go from there.
All right guys, so it's the day after the install. Um, we've got everything put together. He ran it last night, uh, ran it a little bit this morning. Everything's looking really good. Uh, no issues whatsoever. So he's gonna get the car back on the dyno here soon. I think he made 519 wheel horsepower with the PS2 in his setup right now with meth, uh, the meth injection. And uh, we're gonna find out how the high pressure fuel pump um, bumped that up once he gets it dyno tuned. Uh, so he's going to wait to kind of get on it until he gets on the dyno, but um, love the pump, guys. The Dorch is by far, I think, the best option. It has the nice quick connects. It has the solution for the port where you don't have to make your own port injection splitter because it just kind of stacks in there. Um, it's just, to me, uh, you know, to get the bushing to line it up perfectly in there. To me, it's just a, a no-brainer. Uh, the Dorch all the way, um, no questions asked for me in the future uh, going to Dorch. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, please give me a thumbs up if you like my content, and we'll, I'll see you on the next video.